Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and maybe you can tell by the color of the trees, but it's autumn. And in fact, I'm recording this about a week before Halloween. What better time to visit an old graveyard and talk about witches? You see, there's a local legend that this is a witch's graveyard, and I'll tell you all about it. Here's the reason why. Sorry, the sun is in the worst possible position to record this, but do you see that inverted star? Several graves here feature those on the headstones, and it's been interpreted by some as pentagrams or symbols of witchcraft. These types of graves are called tent graves or comb graves, and they're very particular to the mountains in this region of the Cumberland Plateau. Examples can be found across the south, but it's primarily a Tennessee mountain phenomenon. A tent grave consists of two long, thin slabs propped up against two triangular caps at the ends, often with headstones and footstones, although I've seen simpler variations that don't have the headstone and footstone at all. History of tent graves is a little unclear. People may have put stones over the graves to protect them from animals. Some have speculated that maybe the rocky mountainous terrain didn't allow burials deep enough, so stone covers were necessary, but researchers have debunked that in many cemeteries. First known comb graves were made in about 1815 to 1820, and maybe it just became fashionable among mountain communities. With regard to the question of were these people witches, of course not. That's just a legend based on misinformation that may have originated on the campus of a nearby university. Maybe some of the students used the tales to scare their friends or their girlfriends, who knows. A 2013 article in a local newspaper said that Mr. Stamps, the Potter Familius, was an illiterate man, and rather than sign his documents with an X, as was common practice, he preferred to use a star so that people would know that it was his signature. Why so many of the family members would adopt the star motif based on the idea that it was the old man's signature is a little curious to me. I'm not sure why they would do that. No matter what the beliefs and practices of this family might have been, mountain culture has always been deeply traditional with a strong basis in biblical teachings term witch would have been seen as associated with the devil, but there's no question that many mountain people did believe in faith healing and folk magic. But those practices were always attributed to a higher power, not to the healer. I can attest to this because my own mother, who was born and raised in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, was a healer as a youngster. She was born the seventh child, and she never met her father because he was killed in an accident while she was still in utero. That combination of factors gave her special abilities to heal thrush in babies. She told me that when she was young, my grandmother would take her to people's homes where she would go into the room where the sick baby was. There was no talking. She would go in and she would blow into the baby's mouth three times and then they would leave. I asked her once if it actually worked and she said that people told her that it actually did help the babies. So go figure. They're made out of sandstone and many of them are weathering badly. It's a beautiful place to spend eternity.
So yes, I did take a few photographs on this visit, most without any accompanying footage. The rest will be at the end of the video. This is melted candle wax, and it makes me wonder if some people have taken the witch legend as a reason to come out here to conduct ceremonies or rituals. I don't know, maybe I'm letting my imagination run away, but I've never seen melted wax in a cemetery before. Okay, y'all, that's my cue to get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of local history and mountain lore. I found these tattered old artificial flowers on the perimeter of the cemetery and thought it was a very evocative scene. I spotted this amazing tree in a pasture on the way to the cemetery. The light was a little tricky with the sun rising on my right at about the one o'clock position. Another tree helped block the glare from my lens though. And I found this abandoned shack on the way in and circled back to it after visiting the cemetery. Who knows, maybe someone who lived here now lies in the cemetery, it's possible. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit my website at keithdotson.com.